everybody, this is Geneva of Geneva's Closet Talk Show. Please make sure you like and share this video and subscribe to Geneva's Closet if you haven't already done so right here on YouTube. And you can follow me on Facebook at what? At Geneva's Closet. And you can email me at Geneva's Closet 22 at gmail.com. Now, let's get into the news. Uh, what about Amber Geiger? I'd like you to tell me a little bit about her on that particular day. Did Amber Geiger seem to have her faculties about her? Uh, yes. Did she seem to be alert and aware of what was going on around her that day? Uh, to my knowledge, yes. I did. I mean, well, I'm asking you, did she show any, any obvious deficiencies? Uh, none that I saw, no. Okay. Did she seem to have the ability to see with her eyes? Yes. Um, was she able to read like license plates? Did you see any kind of vision issues that caused you any concern? Uh, I didn't see any. All right. Uh, did she complain of being ill? <coughs> no. Did she complain of having any kind of undue stress in her life? No. Did she complain of being tired when she got on duty? No. All right. Uh, did she look like she did normally? Yes. All right. So let me just ask it like this. Was there anything obvious about her, either her appearance or her affect um, that caused you some concern that she wasn't on her game on that day like she always is? There was nothing that caused me any concern. No. Did she seem to be handling her business in an appropriate way that day? Yes. Uh, did she seem to be remarkably absent-minded for any reason? Um, no. Now this, as I understand it, you guys were at DPD. Well, you weren't. T you left, right? Yes. Okay. And the four other members of the CR team, they remained after that? Yes. Okay. Um, you and Amber Geiger, you share a... Well, you, you guys both are very physically fit people. Is that right? Uh, I try to be, yes. Okay. And Miss Geiger, she also tries to remain physically healthy and very physically fit. Yes. All right. Would you, would you consider her to be, at the time of this particular incident, a very healthy, very fit uh, officer? Yes. Okay. What did you, so after you left, what, approximately what time did you get home that particular evening? Uh, it could have been just before 6, maybe a little after. I, I don't remember the exact time, but I would say between 5.30 and 6.30, maybe. Okay. And what, was, what is your phone number? 972-834-5298. And at the time, did you have Amber Geiger's phone number? Yes. Did you guys talk with each other regularly? Yes. Did you text each other regularly? Yes. Did you and Amber Geiger send Snapchat images to each other? Yes. Did you guys send other images through MMS or text messages? Yes. Okay, can you tell the jury specifically on, uh, on or about nine, well let's just use nine six specifically, would you send provocative photographs of yourself to Amber Geiger? Uh, yes. Would Amber Geiger send provocative photos of herself to you? Yes. Um, were there times where you asked her to send particular photos uh, for you and she would do that? Yes. Okay, so th this kind of relationship um, uh, she was familiar enough where you guys would send photographs of one another to each other. Yes. Right. You and Amber Geiger at some point crossed from just being professional partners, police partners, into an intimate relationship. Is that right? Yes. Can you tell me when that happened approximately? Um, sometime in 2017. I, I don't remember the specific date. No. Okay. And, and how long did that relationship last? Um, the intimate aspect of it. Yeah, maybe the end of 2017. I, I don't remember for sure. Okay, you sure that didn't uh, progress well into 2018? Again, I, I don't remember. It could have. Okay. What is...
Officer Geiger, I'm, I'm sorry, Officer Rivera, I'm showing you Officer Geiger's uh, telephone records. If you'd look at this particular line item number 1818, um, dated February of 2018, <coughs> can just I want you to read this to yourself, okay? Okay. Okay. Okay, this is a message from you, correct? Yes. And this is a message to Amber Geiger. Yes. And again, I don't want you to answer this uh, out loud, but do you understand the context of what you're asking her? Yes. Okay. And this was in February of 2018. Yes. You were still having a sexual relationship with her well into 2018, isn't that right? Yes. So if Mr. Rogers had said in his opening statement that your relationship ended well before 2017 ended, that's not accurate? Uh, according to that message, no, it's not accurate. I mean, that was a message from you, isn't it? Yes, and I don't remember that message, but you just showed it to me, so I'm aware of it now. Do you remember sending that message? No, I don't remember sending that message. Do you remember why you sent that message? I have a good idea of why I would send something like that, yes. And that message, again, I'm not, I'm not going to put it into evidence at this point, but that message would clearly indicate you were having a sexual relationship in February 2018. Yes. All right, I want to take you now to February, or pardon me, September the 6th. At about 5.55 p.m., did you and Ms. Geiger start exchanging text messages uh, concerning, well, talking about getting together that particular right. Yes. All right. Your Honor, at this time, uh, I request permission from the court to publish State's Exhibit No. 307. Do you have copies? Yes, ma'am. That screen should show you the same thing that he's putting above your head. Thank you. All right, Officer Rivera, we're just, I'm not going to go through all of these. Uh, I, I just want to kind of establish what it might indicate a meeting for later on this particular evening, but just as a preliminary matter, this is the phone number that you told me earlier is your phone number, correct? Yes. And Officer Rivera, that is your name, is that right? Yes. Okay. This is a, a sorting of records uh, just dealing with your communications to and from this guy. Okay. Okay. I want to, if I could, just go down. We're going to go later into the day, okay? 2.54 p.m. At 2.54 p.m., do you recall that being where you guys were at uh, the Dallas Police Department? Yes. Okay. So you were sending her uh, images, attachments, is that correct? Yes. And that's going to be an instant message to the, uh, an application called Snapchat, is that right? Yes. Can you tell me if you can remember what those images were? <coughs> no. Okay. Do you remember if they were provocative images? I don't remember, no. All right. And then at 5.55 p.m. Do you send a text message to Ms. Rivera, or to Ms. Geiger, when can I come over? Yes. Does Ms. Geiger reply, you can come over after this? Mm-hmm. Yes. All right, does the mm-hmm relate to the Snapchat images? Is that the context in which you understood that to be? Uh, yes. Okay. At 5.56 p.m., does Ms. Geiger send you a message asking you if you ended up taking off manana tomorrow? Uh, yes. Okay. And then at 5.57 p.m., do you indicate, sorry, that last text wasn't for you? Yes. And then she writes, up yours. Yes. And you return... Uh, you reply to that JK. What does JK stand for? Just kidding. Right. Because clearly that message wasn't a fair, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Does Ms. Geiger indicate to you super horny today, too? Yes. This is at 6.01 p.m. Is that right? Yes. 6.01 p.m. You reply, me too. Yes. At 6.03 p.m. 
Ms. Geiger indicates to you, did like that pick though, that didn't help, got me all wet. Yes? Yes. And you reply, like it? Yes. She replies, yeah, I want it to look longer. And then there's no conversation between you until 914, when again, this is going to be an instant message where, uh, again, it looks like a couple of attachments or photographs are sent. Do you recall what it was that you sent to her at that time? No. And this was Snapchat? All right, this was a Snapchat app. Do you recall what the images were that you sent to her? No. Okay. And then at 9.27 p.m., you asked her, still there? Yes. Okay. If you've already asked her earlier about how things are going because you're interested, why are, not, why are you now asking her if she's still there? See if she's still at work. Okay. Again, this doesn't have anything to do with the fact that you guys had planned earlier to get together. Correct. And then at 9.29 p.m., she sends you a Snapchat that also includes a text uh, portion of it that says, want to touch. Is that accurate? Yes. At 9.33, she indicates to you that she's barely walking out. Uh, that's when she's leaving the police station. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And then it looks to me again like you sent another MMS text message, uh, pardon me, an image to her at 9.33 p.m. Do you recall what that image was that you sent to her? No. And again, is it going to be, do you have a, a belief that it was probably yet another provocative photograph? I'm not sure. Okay. And then at 938, you start, or you call her and you begin uh, what is a 16 minute and 44 second conversation with her. Is that accurate, Ms. Drew Yes. Okay. Do you guys often have really 60 minutes and 44 seconds, is that like the typical length of a telephone conversation that you have with Ms. Geiger? Uh, usually to and from the gym, uh, yes. Okay. So we pulled all the telephone records, that, uh, the telephone calls, and would you be surprised to know that there's only a couple of phone calls that were ever substantially long of all the phone calls that y'all had? Uh, yes, I would be surprised. Normally, your, your calls with Ms. Geiger were fairly short, were they not? One, two minutes? Uh, again, she would be the person that I would call to and from the gym. So okay. when I was on my way to the gym or leaving the gym, that's usually who I would call just to pass time. And what is your recollection of that conversation that lasted from 9.30 to 37 until 9.55, 21? Uh, to the best of my recollection, um, Remember asking uh, about the suspects to see if they ever confessed, um, and I really don't remember a whole lot else about the conversation. Okay. Do you recall that she was driving at the time that you were talking to her? Uh, I assume she was. And where were you? Did you say that she was just coming from the gym? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, I believe I was uh, leaving a certain restaurant. I'm sorry, say that again? I believe I was leaving a certain restaurant when that phone conversation was happening. Okay, and, and where were you going? You were going from the restaurant to where? Home. Okay. And had you already been to the gym? Yes. Okay, and where is your gym? It's uh, in Forney. In Forney, Texas, where do you live? Mesquite. So you'd been up for the same amount of time as Amber Geiger? Yes. Right. Did you make it home okay? I did. Right. Anything unusual happen? I mean, were you so fatigued that you were a danger to people you were dealing with? No, I was not. Are you aware of Ms. Geiger pulling off uh, the lane of traffic after she entered her parking garage to engage in this telephone conversation with you? No. Was there anything about that telephone conversation that you could remember that was very demanding or, or required her to stop driving the vehicle so that she could converse with you? No. Do you have any explanation as to why she would have pulled off to engage in this telephone conversation with you? I don't. So approximately what time do you recall making it home? Uh, if I'm looking
looking at that. Uh, I would say just before 10. Did you notice those texts coming in from this guy or at 10 or 2 or 10 or 3 p.m.? Yes. When Ms. Geiger writes to you at 10.02.25, she says, I need you, hurry. Does that kind of convey to you that she's already expecting you to be going towards her? Um, no. How do you read that then? Uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, all those messages came in at the same time. Um, so in addition to that and some missed calls that I received, uh, I, I interpreted it as there was an emergency going on. I understand that, but she says to you, I, I need you, hurry. Like, hurry. She doesn't say where to go, since so a lot is left. I said, like, can you see how that could be read that you already knew where you were supposed to be going? No. Okay, and that's not what that means? No, not at all. And then at 10.03, she, she writes to you, I fucked up. Is that correct? Yes. Did you later come to realize uh, that these text messages had been sent to you while she was on the phone with 911? Um, no, I didn't know that. When, when, you have, when you have been involved in a situation where life-saving measures are required to deal with a citizen, okay? A citizen is dying, and you're the only one there who can help. Are you trained in providing basic emergency care? Yes. What is your job if you're the only one there who can render aid? What should you be doing? Exactly that. Anything else? Um, I mean, if, if you can, try to call for help. Okay, but so that you're already on the phone or you've already let your dispatcher know that you need to have medical personnel and so forth coming to the rescue. Should you be giving 100% of your attention to the person who's dying in front of you, if you can. Yes, you should. Should you be sending text messages? No. Um, Officer Rivero, in this column to the right of the narrative, all of these red <coughs> yeses indicate that these messages were deleted off of Amber Geiger's phone. Essentially, the entirety of your conversation on September the 6th with her, well, every single thing on this page had been deleted. And, well, pretty much, actually everything was deleted except for timestamps. Do you know, if you know, why Ms. Geiger deleted all of these messages that she had sent and received from you? No. She had just been involved in a shooting. You're aware of that, correct? Yes. Are sometimes phones seized on an arrest of an individual? Yes. For evidentiary purposes? Yes. That's actually fairly common, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's very common, but it, it does happen, yes. Do you know whether or not that concern crossed Ms. Geiger's mind? I don't. What about your phone? What about your phone? Did you delete these messages? <coughs> God bless you. Excuse me. Do these messages still exist on your phone, Officer Rivera? They don't. Can you tell the jury why those messages don't exist on your phone? Uh, several reasons. Um, that's not something that I would want to be reminded of, the speaking of the night. Uh, and um, I, don't, I don't keep messages saved uh, unless it's of an importance to me. Okay. So your, your partner was involved in a shooting. You know she's going to be investigated. Are you telling us that you deleted those messages? I did. Rivera, um, how long have you been a Dallas police officer? 16 years. Um, and 
How long in Southeast? Uh, the whole Prosecutors in the murder trial of ex-Dallas police officer Amber Geiger focused on a series of text exchanges she shared with her partner at the time, whom she had been having a sexual relationship with, to question her defense that she was fatigued from work on the night she fatally shot her neighbor. The testimony of her former partner, Officer Martin Rivera, capped the end of the first day of Geiger's murder trial on Monday when prosecutors revealed the pair had sent sexually explicit messages to each other throughout the day and just before she shot her neighbor, Botham John, on September 6, 2018. Geiger walked into John's apartment by mistake, confusing his apartment for hers, she has said, and shot him believing he was a burglar. In his testimony, Rivera said he would send Geiger, 31, provocative photos of himself. Lead prosecutor Jason Hermes, if I'm saying that correctly said that the pair was texting each other hours before the shooting including one message in which Geiger said she was super horny today Hermes said that at about 9 30 p.m. as Geiger finished her 13 and a half hour shift she sent Rivera a snapshot message that read want to touch details of that night continued with each other testimony in a Dallas courtroom Tuesday morning including from the 911 operator who took a call from Geiger and the police officer's body cam video from inside John's apartment as officers tried to render life-saving aid. Neither the prosecution nor the defense disputes that just before 10 o'clock p.m., Geiger parked on the wrong floor of her apartment complex and walked to John's apartment, which she says she mistook for her own unit, and then opened fire with her service weapon on the 26-year-old accountant. She told investigators she thought he was an intruder. Geiger was still in her uniform at the time. While the defense on Monday argued that she had made a tragic mistake, one without any criminal intent, after a long day of work, prosecutors laid out that she was still instead distracted. After Geiger got off of work, she and Rivera had a 16-minute phone conversation that ended as she arrived at her apartment complex parking garage. The police department is about two and a half blocks from the complex. After getting off the phone with Rivera, Geiger had parked on the fourth level instead of the third, where her apartment was. At 10.02 p.m., Herman said Rivera received a text message that said, I need you, hurry. A minute later, she texts, I effed up. Should you be giving 100% of attention to the person dying in front of you, Hermes asked Rivera. Yes, you should, he responded. Should you be sending text messages, Hermes asked. No, Rivera replied. Prosecutors also revealed that the day after the shooting, Geiger and Rivera had deleted their text messages to each other, but they were later recovered. Well, well, well. Who knew that Miss Amber Geiger had a boo thing, booty call, boyfriend, whatever. I don't know if Martin would claim her as his girlfriend, boyfriend, like they're in a relationship. I don't know if he would say that. And I seen in the comments yesterday when I was watching this video, you know, this whole court thing, that people were asking, do he have a wife? Some people were saying that he did have a wife. I don't know if that's what he said before I watched it. Could be. Ain't no telling with Miss Am. But didn't we all think that she was messing with Botham Shim John? That that's probably why she went over there and shot him because they was arguing or whatever the case may be. And to be perfectly honest with you, to me, that one still isn't off the table because don't really know because I don't really believe anything that Amber is saying. And Martin, I don't believe Martin. First of all, him and Amber were deleting text messages. So what really went on with those text messages? I heard it, you know, they said that they still got them. But y'all were deleting text messages. Shiesty. And then he is very selective on what he do and don't remember. So he don't seem to remember anything as far as what kind of text messages they were sending, what pictures were sent on Snapchat. That he don't remember. Nothing, no parts of it. But other things he do remember. They asked, um, was he leaving from the gym? And he said, no, he wasn't leaving from the gym. He was leaving from a restaurant. I said, oh, ho, ho. So you remember a year ago that you wasn't leaving from the gym. You was leaving a restaurant. But you are about as delirious as Amber is. I don't know what was going on. But he don't remember that he was sending her provocative pictures. 
Really bitch, you expect us to believe that? Whatever, we don't believe that. So he's a liar. And then I think that the attorney, the one that's on Botham Shim John's side, was trying to make it known, trying to make Martin reveal that him and the guy, um, Amber Geiger, with the other case, was on some shystiness. They were discussing the witnesses and what were being said as far as the witnesses. So I think, because people were asking in the comments section when I was watching the trial thing yesterday, why is he asking these questions that has nothing to do with anything? But I think his purpose was to show that they are schemy police officers, that they are liars, that they can't be trusted. And that's what I got from it. And then he wanted it to be known that when Amber shot Botham Shim John, then sent Martin the text message saying, um, I effed up, I need you. It was as if. Martin was supposed to already be on his way, which Martin said that that's not what those what that meant when she was like, you know, I need you basically come now. He was like, no, that's not what that means. I didn't get that from that. But I think that the attorney was trying to show that Martin was supposed to already be on his way over there for his booty call. That that's what they were on that evening. So anyway. I just want to know how you all feel about the situation. I will definitely be following this trial. And don't we want to know if Miss Bunny Babs, I can't remember her name. I think it's something with Bunny, the witness that lived in the Southside Flats apartment, which is the one that recorded the whole incident with her, with Amber standing up there talking on the phone. And now we found out texting and calling her boo thing, booty call. And, you know, all of that. She is the one that recorded it. But then the attorneys or whatever said that they didn't know if they were going to use her as a witness because she had been speaking and she started a GoFundMe page. And to be perfectly honest with you, I didn't know what that had to do with anything. But then again, I'm not an attorney, so I don't know how things work. But I just figured that she would be the best witness because she was right there. She recorded the whole thing. She remembered what was said and what was going on and what was she doing right before it happened? What did she even hear to make her get her phone, go out there, and then start recording it in the first place? But we feel like she may reveal some things that won't help Amber Geiger's case, and that's why they probably don't want to use her, but we'll I would see. I like to know how you all feel about this situation and why you are letting me know. Could you please like and share this video and subscribe to Geneva's Closet if you haven't already done so right here on YouTube. And you can follow me on Facebook at what at Geneva's Closet and you can email me at Geneva's Closet 22 at gmail.com you all have a fabulous day and I will talk to you later bye